these are the proud faces of defending champions. For Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the Los Angeles Lakers, this semifinal series against Dallas was to be another whistle stop en route to the NBA Finals. And after two games, it seemed they were on their way, while Dick Mata and his young Mavericks were on their way home, down and almost out. For the Dallas Mavericks, enthusiasm has never been a problem. But with their backs to the wall, they needed a leader to emerge. And it was Derek Harper who stepped forward. Remembered mostly for this fateful play two years ago, the youthful Harper came back to hit the winning shot in game three this year. For the Mavericks, it meant a new life. For Derek Harper, long-awaited redemption. When the sun rose this morning over Dallas, all was peaceful and serene. But in just a few minutes, at Reunion Arena, the scene will be quite different. It's game four, the Lakers and the Mavericks. Seventeen thousand on hand. Another sellout of Reunion Arena, the Dallas Mavericks and the Los Angeles Lakers. And a win today by these young upstart Mavericks. And they leave in this series. And oh, are their fans ready for this win? Now I take a look at the brackets. The Lakers ahead, and of course Houston up on Denver 2-1. And the winners of those two series will square off for the Western Conference Final. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I am Brent Musburger. This arena, of course, has been the scene of some memorable moments for CBS. In February, the NBA All-Star Game. And a short time ago, it was Louisville beating Duke to win the NCAA Basketball Championship. And today, the Dallas Mavericks will attempt to grow up against the Los Angeles Lakers. Working with me, of course, my colleague, the former coach of the Philadelphia 76ers, Billy Cunningham. Billy, when you got a team ready for the Lakers, what was it like? What did you have to prepare for? Well, the problem is there's so many problems when you play the Lakers, you have to refine it. Two major areas. Number one, stopping the transition. Number two, what decisions are you going to make defensively when the ball is in Kareem's hands? Billy, speaking of Kareem, 39 years old, so many big games. How does he get ready for them? Well, in the locker room, Kareem likes to get by himself. Get a book, read a book, just get very quiet, and the players respond to give him that space. All right, I know a lot of coaches around the NBA would like to have a copy of that book. So Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the Lakers are ready for Dallas as the playoffs continue on CBS. The NBA on CBS. Today's game from Reunion Arena is sponsored by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. And by Renault Jeep, official vehicles of the NBA. It started out as a party, but turned into a case of the missing case. The ruby shindig. Nah. Incredible feat. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Put your the oh, baby. It's okay, doll. Oh, it's not. There's a case of Miller Lite missing. Oh. Who took it? It had to be somebody in this room. Rodney! Hey, guys, take it easy, will you? Why'd you do it, Rodney? Because light tastes great? Yeah! Because well, light's less filling. Yeah! I tell you, I didn't do it. Well, I'm not even Rodney. <laughs> you! I thought it was a costume party! Great mask, huh? <laughs> It's no mystery that there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. But if he didn't do it, who did? When you compare Ford Ranger and Chevy S10 to the new two-wheel drive Jeep Comanche, you'll find they're priced about the same. Yet Comanche has the most powerful standard engine, the longest wheelbase, biggest wheels and tires highest ground clearance, and the largest optional payload capacity. In fact, the more you compare Comanche, the more you'll see. There is no comparison. It's easy to be a truck, hard to be a Jeep. Now's the time for a Honda portable generator. Honda. Power. Anytime. Anywhere. Would you like some more coffee? I'd love some. But don't you think it's a little bright in here? 
So we are back at Reunion Arena, and let's take a look at our starting lineups for the Los Angeles Lakers, the defending NBA champions. Up in the front court, James Worthy, a baseline to baseline star for this team. Kurt Rambis, the role player. And for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, this is playoff game 173, a record. Magic Johnson led the NBA in assists for the third time. Byron Scott very improved in Pat Riley's backcourt. Now for the Dallas Mavericks. They are a forward-oriented team. Mark Aguirre, their leading scorer. Sam Perkins, a former teammate of Worthy's down in North Carolina. And quietly, James Donaldson is doing a fine job against Kareem. Rolando Blackman in that backcourt. And of course, the Friday night star, Derek Harper, and the coach, Dick Mata, who has already coached the Washington Bullets to an NBA championship. It'll be Lee Jones and Jake O'Donnell working today, and Dick Bavetta is the alternate. And we are about ready to go here in Reunion, as you can take a look at how this series stands. Note the point totals for the Lakers. They have gone from 130 to 117 to 108. And Billy, I think more than anything else, that reflects the time that Dick Mata had to prepare this team. And no question, and, and I think it'll be very interesting how the guards rebound today for the Lakers. This is an area they got hurt on in the, in the third game, and a big key is Magic Johnson, because if he can get the defensive rebounds, he can just push it down the court and get them right into their transition game. The Lakers have not lost two consecutive NBA playoff games since the title series two years ago. The Mavericks bring it up in their home whites. This is Derek Harper. McGuire is 24. Lambus will take in. Donaldson. Kareem leaning in. The pass is knocked away into the hands of Donaldson. This is Sam Perkins. Off the fake, he traveled. Well, right away we see that Dallas is looking to go at Kareem inside. And for good reason, Donaldson's shooting over 70% from the field in the playoffs. Magic comes to the left side, he and Kareem in that two-man game, back to Magic, and he ships it into the big center, Sky hooks to the middle. Doesn't get the roll, Mavericks rebound. Harper to Aguirre. That's the matchup that's given the Lakers a, a rough time because Aguirre can hurt you inside or go outside on the bigger players. Byron Scott used the Abdul-Jabbar screen so well and came to the corner. He likes to shoot from the side. Donaldson out high this time. Aguirre cuts off him. Well, he's picking up where he left off in the second half in the last ball game. Lambus, Scott again. Beautiful rotation on the ball. What an offensive player he has developed into. The beauty is the execution, how he waited for that screen by Kareem and used it and came wide open for the jump shot. Here's Aguirre again, up over Lambus. Now that's an area he wasn't able to hurt Rambus in the second, in the third game. He had to go outside and look to put the ball on the floor to beat Rambus. Now Worthy looking for an opportunity, can't find it. Magic, great pass, Rambus, looked him off, the tap is good. You'll notice they treat Worthy the same way they do Jabbar starting out this ball game. They're looking to double down on both players, forcing L.A. to beat him from the perimeter. Wire maneuvers, Kareem blocked it. Here's Magic. Dallas has done a great job getting back defensively. Magic fouled on the play, Derek Harper coming over. I really believe, Brent, for Dallas to have a good game and beat this team, they're going to need Blackman to come out and have a big ball game for him. He's really been struggling with his shot and started forcing, I thought, quite a bit in that third ball game. Missed two. Magic's really struggling on the foul line. He's only shooting 67% during the course of the playoffs, and he's a much better foul shooter than that. Perkins in low, up over Worthy, his good friend and former teammate. That's another new look we've seen for Dick Mata. In the last game, Sam Perkins was out on the perimeter a lot, lot more. Billy, I notice that Dallas is playing with a great deal of confidence. Now we see Rambis and Aguara going at it. Uh, 
Remember yesterday, Pat Riley mentioned to us he expected Rambis to come out and really work his tail off defensively against Aguirre. And I think that he was a little upset with him. Worthy on a beautiful left-handed drive into the key. Furious pace here at the start of this game. Deadlocked at eight. Both teams shooting well. Perkins swinging up the hook, and he was fouled. And that's number one on Worthy. How, Billy, how do Perkins and Worthy compare as basketball players, both from North Carolina? You're so familiar with them. Yeah, teammates won a national championship together. But Worthy, a lot quicker. Uh, Sam has that those long arms. Uh, I bet you he's over 40 inch arms length of his 40 sleeve. And uh, now we're seeing something different. As I mentioned in the last game, he was more out in the perimeter, moving the basketball, either finding Blackman or Aguirre. Starting this ball game, they're looking to go inside and go at Worthy. Rambus off with the miss. Mavericks lead it by one, just underway. Celtics lose for the first time. Game five in the Atlanta series. Now goes back to the Boston Garden next week. Kareem free. That was great execution. The key to that play, Byron Scott screen, allowing Jamar to come across the lane wide open. McGuire wants it in low. Rambus fronted him very well. Backing in on Worthy. Coming up again. That's just an outstanding one-on-one -on -one move right there. Worthy left his feet, and Perkins was able to duck under and bank it off the boards. Now Worthy comes back, and he drew the foul. Chance for the three-pointer. Can you imagine the days when they were in college together, sitting in the dormitory, probably talking about, boy, it'd be great to play together. And here they are going head-to-head. -head. It's almost a little one-on-one -on -one battle, these two guys. There was another fellow by the name of Michael Jordan on that North Carolina team. Is he still playing? <laughs> That effort he had against Boston was truly one of the greatest performances I've ever seen in basketball. Now here's the problem for Rampus, one-on-one with McGuire. McGuire pulls it up. Donaldson was crushed underneath. We'll see who they assess the foul on. It's going on Magic, and that's his first personal. Two team fouls on the Lakers and two team fouls on the Mavericks here with 8.03 to go. Well, we see Kareem did not do a good job keeping Donaldson off the boards, and he just stepped right into the lane. Oh, Perkins feels it, but he was short that time. Magic with a rebound. If you see for the perimeter, you can get those long rebounds like that one. Uh, but I'll tell you, Dallas is doing such a great job getting four players back defensively. Stopping that transition game. Three-second violation. They come over on the side. Now, an area that hurt the Lakers was, was Harper's penetration, able to go to the basket or dish off. And not only that, even if the shot was missed, that penetration created a lot of opportunities for them on the offensive boards. Blackman didn't get the spin. Perkins, and he was fouled. He'll shoot a pair. That's the first on Kareem. Well, same problems for the Lakers as they had in game three. The offensive boards. Sam Perkins, two shots. Now, it was interesting, Brent, when we were talking with Dick Mata yesterday and asked him who he thought his best player was on this ball club. And his response was Sam Perkins. The Mavericks to within one at the 7.30 mark, first period. Worthy. Out of Magic's hands. Goes to Dallas. I think it's very interesting to see Magic on the boards today. This is an area that I remember when we played against the Lakers for the World Championship a few times. He would just kill us on the offensive and defensive boards. Harper, Dallas leads. Scott 
Elliott gets it back. You just cannot relax for one second when you're playing against the Lakers. You just That was after a made field goal. They are able to push it down and get the open jump shot for Scott. Here come the Lakers. Were they on the move? You know, last game, the, the Lakers in game three got their first fast break with 4.22 left in the first period. I can never remember that happening. We have a timeout called. Harper brought it down and asked Jake O'Donnell for the stoppage. So the players will huddle around the coaches and we'll be right back. Between my schoolwork and this job barking cars, I really have a full day. That's why I love a Milky Way. Take my mind off work, make plans for the game later. Mm, it's great. You get the goodness of a quarter cup of milk in every bar. There's milk, natural cane and corn sugars, and thick, thick chocolate in a Milky Way bar. Milky Way, it really helps me out. A Milky Way day helps you work, rest, and play. Families have come to us. They believe in liberty, liberty, mutual insurance. Our house is special to us, so we shopped around for homeowners insurance. Liberty Mutual gave us the right protection at the right price. We, we believe, believe in, in liberty. liberty. America believes in liberty. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Presenting five incredible things you can do with a new John Deere lawn tractor. You can cut grass more evenly with our new mowing deck. You can get rid of rainwater with our new tip seat and ride more quietly because we've enclosed the engine. You can even carry heavier loads because we've added more horsepower. But the most incredible thing you can do with the new John Deere tractor is take one home because we've lowered the price. Isn't that incredible? There's a sexy stranger in Harry Kenyon's shower and she claims to be his wife. Mike Farrell, Margot Kidder and Elliot Gould, vanishing act tonight. From deep in the heart of Texas, the Western Conference NBA playoffs continue on CBS. Yesterday, it was the Eastern Conference, Milwaukee and Philadelphia. That series moving to Philly, and the 76ers come away behind the round mound of rebound. Charles Barkley, 29 points, 13 rebounds. What a magnificent play late in the game. 76ers were down by a point. On the turnover, they bring it back. Watch Julius run the ball down and save it, and then going out of bounds makes this fantastic pass to Bobby Jones and Billy Cunningham. You've seen athletic skill like that with those two yeah many years and they made coaching worthwhile having two gentlemen like that to, to be involved with Billy why did Dick Mata choose that opportunity to call a timeout I think the biggest concern he has is the transition game now they got a quick basket even though it was after a made out of transition and then a wire shot missed but Blackman offensive rebound well, Byron Scott cannot allow Blackman to get to the offensive boards. That's a great way for Blackman to get himself started. Get a cheap basket on the boards that oh, way. Chance for a three-pointer. Score it for Magic. Send him up to the free-throw line. Now. And that's the second foul on Derek Harper here in the first period. That can be a big problem for this ball club because he's just been playing great basketball for this Johnson for this team, both, both offensively and defensively. Friday night, we saw that Detlef Shrimp is not ready defensively to handle Magic. So that means that Brad Davis is going to have to come in, and if Cooper goes out and plays him defensively, he puts a great deal of pressure on him. Harper on the drive. Shrimp Perkins came out to that angle. And he's first. Block another offensive rebound. Here's Magic. Oh. Perkins yanks it away. Shifts Harper middle. Bounce pass. Come back. Kareem. Magic. Two man. So quickly they strike back at you. You're going to be tired today watching this game, boy, I tell you. Bang, bang. Harper, tie the score, 5-12, first period. Here's James, oh, they're coming through here in Dallas. If we see 
feats of athletic skill in the first period of this game. Well, wait till the Lakers put their quick team on the court. <laughs> oh, Aguirre, but there was a whistle. So Storrett says to hold it now. Let's see what he does over here at the table. I don't know. What the rule is, Jake O'Donnell had called it an illegal defense when the shot was being taken. And now the shot went in, so he rubs, wipes out that illegal defense. So we're deadlocked at 24. 4.50 to go, first period. On that hoop by Aguirre. Into Kareem. Lakers regain the lead. Just burned the 24-second shot clock. It's taken him about 10 seconds of trip. Right now, Pat Riley has to be pleased with the, the tempo of this ball game. Knocked away. Magic gets it into the hands of Scott. It's three on three. Mavericks are back this time. Scott from the corner. The Pirates. Houston building an early lead, leading in that series. 2 1. Aguirre back for the Mavericks. Down by two and 12 points by Mark Aguirre in the first period. You know, you stand next to Mark McGuire, he's he's not 6'5", and to have the ability he has and get those shots off inside just amazes me. He and Dan and Adrian Dantley have always amazed me to be able to shoot the ball the way they do. The Lakers have hit 13 of 17. And Scott regains control. It's now 13 of 18. Donaldson off into the hands of Harper. The Mavericks get off to a 12 of 18. Here's Perkins taking 13 of 19. Well, you can see that this Dallas team is not intimidated at all by playing against the World Championship Lakers. If this is any indication, we are in for some afternoon. Test pilot Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. Up here, power when you need it can save your neck. When you get back down to your car, it helps too. Today's smaller engines need extra firepower from a spark plug, and AC delivers. If you could look inside your engine, you'd see an AC spark plug delivering up to 30,000 volts, firing 30 times a second. Firepower when you need it from AC. Get rebates now on AC spark plugs. Never wait for trouble. I'm no car salesman. And you're no dummy. So I have no chance of selling you a Renault in 30 seconds. But I must tell you, I think this Renault is too good a car for you not to consider. Yes, you can do the expected and buy another one of whatever it is you're driving. Or you can put yourself in a Renault. Probably not the first car you'd think of, but it just might be the smartest. Since I hung up my size 19 sneakers, Dave and I always get together for a few Miller Lights and argue about who was the greatest player. You were the greatest. No, Bob, you were. At least we agree Lights taste is the greatest. Yep, Lights also less filling. And you can't afford to get filled up when you're the great Bob Lanier. Come on, Dave. You won the MVP and the championship. Those were the two biggest feats in basketball. No, Bob. Those were the two biggest feats in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> for the biggest taste, there's only one light beer. Miller Lights. Last year, it was shots like this that carried Bob Eastwood to the title. The Byron Nelson Golf Classic, next weekend on CBS Sports. Well, the CBS eye stays focused on Dallas Reunion Arena, and it can't get any better than this. And, of course, next week down here, it'll be the Byron Nelson Classic. We were out to that course out at Las Colinas, spoke with Byron Nelson, and uh, Billy, he really thinks it's going to be some show on that back nine. Great golf course. A lot of fun. Cost me a few dollars, but I had a good time. <laughs> and the stars are out in Dallas. There's Roger Staubach and Cliff Harris, one of the Cowboys stars, and traveling in from Los Angeles, James Garner is here to root on for Los Angeles Lakers. Dick Mata has gone to the bench, Billy, and who's his first substitute? He's got Brad Davis in because, number one, that Harper's got those two fouls. He can't afford him to pick up that quick third. Worthy traveling on the turnover and on the floor now for the Lakers. Maurice Lucas and Michael Cooper have both come off the bench. Now we'll pick up some of the matchups as they come up. Cooper will stick over here with Davis. Kareem still has Donaldson. And Hawkins swings three, bangs one in for the perimeter. That's 10 points.
minutes for Sam Perkins' first period. What they're doing is that they hit the post and they split, and the Lakers are switching, and Perkins is reading the switch beautifully. Great move inside off an outside fake, but Kareem couldn't get it to fall. I'll tell you, Donaldson's doing some job on the boards. Dallas has hit eight field goals in a row. 14 points for Mark Aguirre. Cooper, three-pointer. Off Rudy. I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to be an official today because you better be in good shape getting up and down the court. Matter of fact, I wouldn't want to be an official any day. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Here's the, excuse me, Brent. That's a tough matchup. Lucas and McGuire out on the court. Force Black with a miss from the corner, Billy, and Cooper brings it down now. And Coach Pat Riley up on the sideline, signaling the play that he wants here in the half court set for the Lakers. Michael Cooper has improved so much since his first day as a Laker. Scott missing. Brad Davis yanks down the rebound. Perkins! seen a better first period than what we're watching in Dallas right now. This is a heavyweight fight. Just banging at each other, going at each other with every everything they have. Rudy off the fake. You can't even hear the whistle. Now, Brad Davis is all past here. At first, from our angle, I thought it was going out of bounds. And there's Sam Perkins. What a catch. Not only, and then making the basket. Thank you, 40-inch reach. And, you know, Brad Davis knew that. You know, that he knows the guy he was passing that ball to and what his abilities are. That foul was on Perkins at this end, and that's two personals. And now Jay Benson checks in off Coach Mata's bench for the Mavericks. Benson is 31, he's 6'7", and listen to the applause for Perkins. You know, Brent, I can't remember a playoff year where there's been more foul shots missed, more a shooting percentages on the foul line. Just seems that uh, you see Milwaukee shooting 51%. You see Magic missing all the foul shots. On fire, 16 in the first period. I wouldn't be surprised to see Cooper get matched up against uh, Aguirre at some point in this game because he's some defensive ball player and has that ability to play somebody in any position, lead guard or strong forward. Here comes Aguirre. Dallas is off on a 12-1 run. And Blackman will move to the free throw line on the Cooper foul. That tells you right there. You know, Blackman, Brent, he's getting himself involved in the offense on the break, getting a few offensive rebounds. Now when he comes off those screens, looking for the jump shot, that basket's going to look a lot bigger for him. Too. Lucas out high. Cooper. It's Scott. Uh, you know, the thing about Scott is how quickly he gets that shot off. You know, he anticipates the pass. Aguirre is now 9 of 12. <laughs> you know, it's funny. He and Dick, Dick Mata did not get along well, but right about now, Dick Mata loves him. <laughs> <laughs> See, Worthy turned the corner beautifully at the other end. That's 12 for Worthy. Aguirre is right back. What a shooting performance by Mark Aguirre. 20 points here in the first period. Cooper to Brad Davis. You know, the funny thing, the way this game is going, Pat Riley might have to slow the tempo because the way this Dallas ball club is getting up and down the court and shooting the ball, he might have to force them to set up their offense. We've got 10 seconds left in the period. Last shot time, a 10-point lead by the Mavericks. 
Blackman. Go to Slam. A while back, some guy comes up and says, my car has struts. Fancy shocks. And he says, they're not riding good. I says, whoa, car's only a few years old. It rides fine. Then he wants me to ride test Monroe gasmatic struts. So I did. And I tell you, the car rides much better with them Monroe struts. Funny name for shock absorbers. Save during the Monroe Best Ride Sale. Dallas Mavericks have just tied an NBA playoff record for the most points in the first period. The Lakers did it against Phoenix. That was last year in April when they exploded for 45. Here this afternoon with Mark Aguirre leading the way. The Mavericks open up a lead on the defending champions. Now, Billy, I am amazed at the pace of this particular game. Well, you are. As I mentioned to you earlier, you're going to be tired because you're going to have to carry the whole game. It's going so quick. But the big thing is, I want to see if Dallas has the ability to maintain this throughout the game. Because now they're coming in with their bench, and I think they're vulnerable with their bench. Lucas, Worthy, A.C. Green, Magic Johnson. Donaldson yanks it away from Green. So it's Donaldson, Davis, Blackman. Benson and Detlef Shrimp on the floor for Dick Motter. This is Brad Davis. Detlef Shrimp, the rookie, going in defensive, and Worthy reached over on him. That's his second personal foul. You know, Donaldson is a great addition to this ball club. You know, if I, you look at this team, before they had James Donaldson, they were a very too nice a group of men out there. He brings that intimidating a great cut by Davis, though. Well, he used that screen, and there was no defensive help by the Lakers. They just allowed him to penetrate down the lane. Now it's Cooper. It goes over to Dallas. They are in the second period, 32-27. Here, the Dallas Mavericks are up, 47-33, and they've hit 13 of their last 14 shots. I'll tell you how fast that pace was. We couldn't even keep track with Aguirre's points. I thought he had 20, and he officially had 21. Blackman coming in. Knocked away. Run down by Cooper, and off of Davis. And Cooper crashes in a heap into a chair there, out of bounds, but he's fine. Billy, with the crowd very much in the game, what do you think Coach Riley might do here with the Lakers? Well, I don't think the crowd is a factor for the Lakers. Now, the crowd can, is a big factor for a young ball club like this Dallas team, giving, showing them that great support. Uh, the Lakers have been in louder, as loud a places as this many times in Philadelphia, in the Boston Garden, so they know how to respond to, to these buildings. This is Benson outside. It's shrunk. Ball away is short. Magic, long pass to Worthy. Shrimp and Worthy collide. Ball goes out of bounds. Lakers ball. Lee Jones missed that one. That went off Worthy's fingertips. That's tough, though, you know, for the officials to get up and down the court and get an angle like that. First time I defended an official, I think, in my life, but it was a tough situation because <laughs> Lee Jones was on the other side of the court. You know, in a game like this, Billy, when you bring someone like Detlef Shrimp off the bench and he's been obviously nervous as Byron, Byron Scott Scott's returns to the Lakers. But Detlef, who's been nervous, when you open up a lead and it's free-flowing, you can get somebody off a mark in a situation that's like this. That's a very this. good point. You know, get an easy basket, transition basket. That's why I think Blackman's been able to get himself going. Magic hit Lucas. He's open for Barry. Now, Lucas has just had a great playoff for this ball club. He's come, he had a fine 
fine year, you know, leading the team in rebounding, which I don't know if that's good or bad, having someone off the bench do something like that. Blackman. The Mavericks are going out after him. They're clutching the glass. There was a hole oh. underneath. Magic Johnson's second personal, and Lucas is going at it with Vincent. Lucas, of course, the enforcer for the Lakers. Legends of the NBA, the best come through. Sponsored by Schick. Game seven of the 69 finals, and Don Nelson is Boston's man in the clutch. Nelson's board work keeps the Celtics close against the favorite Lakers, and he again comes through in the closing seconds. Teammate John Havlicek is stripped of the ball, but Nelson is there to put up a foul line jumper. It drops through for the deciding basket, giving Boston its 11th NBA title. going on this afternoon. Let's get up to Denver and Jim Nance. Jim, how about that ball game? Here in Denver at McNichols Arena, the Houston Rockets leading Denver 34 to 31. Rockets with a two game to one advantage. But the biggest story so far, Akeem Olajuwon is on the bench with three fouls, and we still have 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Well, Jimmy had 13 points here early in the game, was taking the ball to the basket. This is gonna change the Houston philosophy now. They're gonna have to pick up the pace with Ralph Sampson, but Denver, again, the bench production today has been the story, has gotten them back in the ball game. So that's the story here in Denver. All right, Jim, and of course, here in Reunion, the story has been Mark Aguirre and the Mavericks, who exploded for 45 in the first period. Aguirre had to leave, though, and let's go to Pat O'Brien to find out what the problem is. Pat? Brent, as you know, Mark Aguirre has a back problem. He's had a history of back spasm. In fact, it was, went on a little bit during the Utah series. His back gave him some problems. They took him in, did some stretching exercise, put a little heat on it. They say he's okay. They hope he's okay. Let's go back to Brent. Nothing wrong with his right elbow, is there? As Maurice Lucas stepped right in to protect his teammate that time. And Billy, you and I remember a championship series in Philadelphia. It was game two, 1977. Daryl Dawkins got into it, and Maurice Lucas was the enforcer there that night. Well, the funny thing is, poor Doug Collins, the CBS, happened to be in the way and got punched. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent buries the free throws, 49-37. Now it's uphill for the champions, but a lot of poise, a lot of class, and the Lakers have been there before. Many of these men have been on championship teams elsewhere, like Magic Johnson. He didn't look back. Ball goes out of bounds. Just about the time I get ready to praise them as the defending champions, they make a boo-boo like that. I think they're a little shocked. They didn't expect this team to come out, you know, and, and play them as hard and play them as well as they have today. Because the Lakers were ready to play. On the turnover, it'll be Byron Scott. Here's Green. I mean, inside, the shrimp went after him and took a good foul, made sure he did not hit the field goal. That was some effort to block the shot. And uh, he just happened to get a piece of his arm, but he shows them some great jumping ability. Now, one thing, Brent, we always, when we played against the Lakers when I was in Philadelphia, we were always concerned about loose balls, and we felt that that was a good indication on how who was going to win the ball game. And the one thing, I know the Lakers are down by you know, 10, 11 points right now, but they're getting to the loose balls a lot better than they did on uh, a couple nights ago. 
Davis brings it down. Mavericks are attacking hard at the offensive end. They have forced the pace. Benson is short. Magic crashes down, claiming he was fouled. Lucas up with the loose ball. Meanwhile, the captain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, watching for a while. Magic right down the middle, a chance for a three-point. The guy's a winner, isn't he? Magic, you know, Magic, young player in this league. He holds the all-time record for assists in the playoffs. In the history of the NBA. Aguirre returns with 21 points in the first period. And now Shrimp has to go to the backcourt with Brad Davis. I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more defensive pressure if the, this lineup stays in there by the South, by the Lakers. Green now trying to track Aguirre, and there was contact. And that's the first on Lucas. Now Aguirre will go to work, and he's almost double-teamed. Lucas will step back. Aguirre swings into the left hand. A turnover. Off the dribble, it goes back to the Mavericks. Pat Riley's going to have to make some decisions about how he wants to play Aguirre. He might have to just go double him when he gets that ball down low immediately and take it out of his hands because he is just so hot. He's on fire. Look at him. Short this time. Green maybe, runs it down. Maybe that's the secret. Fall down. Distract him. <laughs> Great pass to Scott. Got in a little too far. Magic comes back. Can't hit it. Two Lakers are down. The handoff to Cooper. Missed it. Benson out. Now, you might think that's a bad shot by Cooper, but he was concerned about the three-second ball. Donaldson, but it's offensive foul on Brad Davis. And Magic Johnson is down again on the floor. With Kareem Abdul-Jabbar returning. You know, the Western Conference has the reputation of not being as physical is the East. But I'll tell you, if you were sitting here, and I maybe, I hope it gets across on the TV, how physical a game it is inside. Scott. Green, an offensive rebound, but the whistle was blown, and there was a loose ball foul coming off of the rebound. Jay Benson, and that's his first personal of the game here in the second period. Now, Harper and Perkins both return. So it's the Mavericks starting lineup except that Blackman will sit and Davis at that other guard. Cooper left-handed drive. Perkins contributes immediately off the bench with a rebound. Harper will take Cooper through underneath over to the weak side. Now they find it. Short, here's Scott. Mavericks retreat on defense, and Perkins came back to get a hand on that shot by Scott. That's just great hustle by Sam Perkins getting back now. What should have happened there is one of Byron Scott's teammates should have let him know that Sam Perkins was right behind him. To the captain. <laughs> Excellent execution on that out-of-bounds play. Inside of seven minutes, first half, 51-43, Dallas over the Lakers. Looking to run their three-man game and going inside to Aguirre. Kareem moves quickly, and Donaldson's the open man. That's just a great pass by Aguirre. Well, Aguirre was third in all forwards in the NBA in assists behind Cole Percy and Larry Bird. They double team Kareem. Battles away, knocked from the green. Derek Harper's up with it. Aguirre's in front of him. Twenty-five points for Mark Aguirre. Back to Magic. 
it just will not fall for the Lakers. And the Lakers are not getting back defensively. Davis missing. Cooper had a hand on it. And Perkins also touched it. We've got a timeout. Dallas. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar will try to regroup. Dick Mata will attempt to keep his Mavericks going. Six oh. The horse, one of the world's most powerful domesticated animals. Now this small pickup, the tough 86 Ford Ranger STX, has harnessed unbeaten horsepower in a small pickup. Now Ranger has 140 horses under its stylish hood in a new improved V6 engine. More horsepower than even Toyota's turbo. And Ranger's 140 horses mean down-to-earth power. Power to run. Power for real driving fun. The Ford Ranger STX Super Cab, voted 4 by 4 of the year. Get 5.9% financing at your participating Ford dealer now. When it's fix-up time around your house, the professionals at True Value Hardware Stores can help you do it yourself with this sturdy six-foot aluminum stepladder from Werner, just $29.99. Repair cracks and leaks with Red Devil sealants. Your choice, only $1.22. Then fight dirt and mildew stains with True Test Siding Cleaner, just $5.98 a half gallon. And the Wagner Power Stripper softens old paint fast. It's just $39.99 at participating True Value Hardware Stores. At Midas, we've always been proud of the job we do. A lot of our new customers are referred to us by our old ones. Howdy, boy. Welcome back, Mr. Creedy. You see, good service, good prices. The word gets around. Like our fantastic anniversary sale. We're giving you 25% off every Midas muffler. A sale like this doesn't come along every day. Take it to Midas. I love a sale. <laughs> Take it to someone you trust. Tuesday, a woman is terrorized by a psychotic admirer. He wants me! The only one who can end her nightmare, the Equalizer. Tuesday. Back in Dallas, I'm Brent Musburger, and this is a great day, and it's going to be a big week, especially for my colleague Billy Cunningham, because tomorrow he will head to Springfield, Massachusetts, where he will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Some of you didn't have the pleasure of watching Billy Cunningham in action when he came out of North Carolina and wound up, of course, Philadelphia, and he was one of the great players. And then he went on to become a coach, and he coached the 76ers to the World Championship, along with our colleague Tommy Heidson. Billy Cunningham, I want to congratulate you. No one deserves it any more than you do. Well, thank you, Pat. As you noticed, I got the ball up pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you like to shoot a lot. Oh, yes. When in doubt, shoot. That was my motto. <laughs> Six minutes to go here in the first half, 55-43. Dallas with the lead. When do the Lakers get over being stunned and start to regroup in this game? I, well, you see the forward scoring first right there with Aguirre. But I don't know, you know, the big question I still have, are they gonna be able to maintain the style of play that they're going through right now? There's Kareem with the skyhook, one weapon that does not desert this championship team. That's 10 points overall. Magic gets the ball out of bounds. He's complaining it was off Davis. Jake O'Donnell will have none of that. Mavericks ball, 17 on the shot clock. Well, you see right away, Pat's going to the quickest lineup he can put in there with A.C. Green and Worthy at the forwards position for two reasons, offensively, getting back defensively. Harper with a superb defensive move, knocked the ball out of bounds. The Lakers have 19. It's amazing when Dick Mata made the decision to start him and bench, bring Brad Davis off the bench, it just seemed to ignite his whole career. Oh. The guy hook is short. Knocked out of bounds by the Lakers. It goes to Dallas and an update out of Denver. Oh, back, back, back Houston leading by three with the Nuggets coming back in the second period. And of course, we heard that report that Akeem Olajuwon was in foul trouble and at halftime, Pat O'Brien was also there with us. He'll update that story. Here in the second period, the Lakers are five of 12 and Dallas has cooled off considerably. They are four of 11. Wire is short. Johnson pressures the other end. Off the dribble, spotted away by Perkins. Billy, really, the Mavericks are much more aggressive.
than they have been in this series. It's as though they now have some confidence against the Lakers. Well, you could feel it talking to Dick Mata. I was really shocked, to tell you the truth, Brent, the confidence he had that he really felt that this team could not only compete, but beat the Lakers. Green rolls in that hook. That's 12 points to give you an idea of how things have gone for the Mavericks. They tie the record in the first period. They pour in 45 points, and here they have only 10 in the second period with 4.27 to go. A.C. Green doing a good job defensively on Mark Aguirre. Perkins now comes inside with the center. That was excellent patience. The ball went inside, he gave it out, they went back inside until he has a real good position and a strong move. Rebound. If Scott's not shooting from the perimeter, that really hurts this Laker team when they go to their set offense. Blackman misses. Green. Here's Magic Johnson. Got a step, and Perkins jumped over quickly to help out. They have the mismatch inside. They'll look to go inside to Worthy. Perkins got a hand on it, but Magic came back. So far, the Lakers have been getting to the loose balls, something they didn't do. I hate to keep bringing that up, but I, I've always believed that's a real trademark of this Laker ball club. Well, you don't knock a team like the Lakers out in the first period. Or the second period. Three-pointer. Harper. Well, that's scary if you're Pat Riley over there. You give the help, force the perimeter shot, and Harper is just burying that three-point shot. A running hook. Kareem. That's 14 by Kareem. Donaldson. They're just toying with the Lakers right now at the offensive end of the court. Just the Lakers have got to do something defensively to stop the well, even when they go to the set offense, they get the easy shot. Knocked out of bounds. Scott did not find the going easy on that trip, did it? Today's small cars are tougher than ever. Four Brent coming up at the half. Back to your Pat, we look forward to that. Here are the Reunion Arena faithful. Have exploded since the beginning of this game when the Mavericks poured in 45 points to tie an NBA record in that first period. They lead the Lakers by 11, and Billy, you have pointed out that Pat Riley's defense will have to get them back in this game. It has, and the tempo has slowed down a little bit. The Lakers are just shooting terribly. Harper came out and collided with Scott. Byron Scott, he's assessed his first personal on this game. Just what you pointed out, Billy, that the tempo has slowed down and the shooting percentages reflect that. Look at that first period shooting by Dallas, 74%. It'll be interesting to see who comes out and establishes themselves at the start of the third period. So far, the last two games, it's been Dallas that's come out shooting. Harper gets it back. Donaldson. I wouldn't have wanted to get my hand in there either. Worthy. James Worthy. Harper back for Dallas. Looking to go inside to acquire. AC Green has done the best job defensively so far on Aguirre. The rookie put a hand out there and influenced that shot. Worthy's off with a miss. They get past Aguirre, but Harper is there to pick him up. Cooper did it return for the Lakers. Kareem, who's led the way offensively for the Lakers in the second period, gets it to Scott. 
rebounded, yanking it away from Green. Well, Donaldson is just doing a great job, not only taking up that space and being physical inside, but he's attacking those rebounds. Wire lost it on the drive. Got a little too flashy. Here's Scott. Byron Scott. That was excellent help at the other end by Kareem. Having his hands up and deflecting that pass. 21 points for Aguirre in the first period and four here in the second. 14 overall for Perkins. Blackman off the drive, scoring. That's 10 points for Blackman and put him on the line. I don't mean to take anything away from that great move to his left by Rolando Blackman, but watch the, the way, the, watch Worthy not moving his feet, not stepping over, giving the help, or Jabbar. He just goes straight down the lane. You must step in there and give that help. The second personal has been assessed to Byron Scott. That was at the start of the play, and they gave him the continuation as he rolled past Worthy and went on into the basket. Now, Worthy could not slam him in that situation because he has two right now. He did not want to pick up number three. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Shrimp taking magic. Magic swing past him and score the field goal and put Magic on the free throw line. He knows he can take Shrimp inside anytime he wants. Yeah, he found out Friday night. You know, Magic is so great going to his right. The one thing you, you, you try to push him to his left because he's not as good a passer and, and he doesn't shoot the ball as well going to his left. Well, with three seconds to go, both coaches use the opportunity to deploy some fresh troops. Kareem, of course, will sit down for Pat Riley. You've seen that so frequently with the Lakers. Brad Davis. Try to push him to his left because he's not as good a passer and, and he doesn't shoot the ball as well going to his left. Well, with three seconds to go, both coaches use the opportunity to deploy some fresh troops. Kareem, of course, will sit down for Pat Riley. You've seen that so frequently with the Lakers. Brad Davis is put back in to handle the ball for Dick Mara. You know, it's not a matter of the Lakers playing such terrible basketball in their first half. Dallas has just played an outstanding first half. And the thing is, they've got to come out and put two halves together. Stolen by Worthy. The end of the half. And the Dallas crowd will tell you how it's going so far. Pat O'Brien is coming up at the half here on CBS Next. CBS Sports coverage of the NBA. Reed got a rebound early in the game, and that triggered a fast break. And Ralph Sampson took the ball in for a jam, and the, the Houston Rockets got off to a 13-0 run. Doug Ball was not happy with his team in the early part of the going, and Denver then rallied late as Alex English made a nice move, and that brought Denver within three, 43 to 40 is the score in the second period. Early today here on CBS, Boston lost its first playoff game of this season against Atlanta in the Omni. Dick Stockton called that game and filed this report from the Omni earlier this afternoon. The Hawks followed a familiar script this afternoon. They were spearheaded by the great Dominique Wilkins, who scored 37 points. But Wilkins had great support from a player as exciting as Dominique himself. Five foot seven Spud Webb came off the bench to electrify the crowd and ignite his teammates. Relentless speed all the way by a little man who took the Celtics by storm this afternoon. You know, I try to stay under control because, uh, you know, early in my year they were saying I was out of control. So I guess, uh, you know, you work at uh, being under control but uh, in a fast pace. The Celtics had a miserable shooting day. Only 34%. Larry Bird shot under 30%. The difference in game three was them making shots versus missing shots. And I think it was clear today. They missed some shots they had made last game. 
Our idea was the same today as it was game three. We just did a little bit better. and they Starting made lineup. He's got to make the adjustments to stop their transition ball game. Possibility of taking one of his forwards, not worthy, but the opposite forward off the offensive boards to get him back defensively to try and stop their transition game. There was no doubt that A.C. Green did a better job defensively against Mark McGuire. Absolutely. He has the ability to play him inside with his sight, and he's much quicker than Arambis or Lucas out on the floor playing against uh, Mark McGuire. But he is going to give Rambus an opportunity to start again here in the second half, Billy. But if Aguirre gets off the mark, and how has Mark Aguirre played in the early minutes of the third period so far? Awesome. For whatever reason, Brent, it, during the course of this series, his strongest period has been the third period. He's come out flying. So it's Perkins, Donaldson, Aguirre, Harper, and Blackman on the floor against Scott, Magic Johnson, Worthy, Abdul Jabbar, and Rambus. And Blackman gets the ball into the backcourt. And the shot clock winds down toward 10 seconds for the Lakers. Abdul Jabbar hits Rambus. That's just a great play by Jabbar. And you don't see him make that pass off the dribble very often. Usually, it's as soon as he receives the ball, reads the cutter, makes the pass then. Harper. They were doubling Aguirre, who went back to the open man, and Harper hit from the perimeter. Well, what it amounts to is Pat Riley has decided that, hey, we, if they're going to beat us, they're going to have to beat us from the perimeter, and it's got to be Harper. The crowd, which was on such a high in the first half, has settled back down. They're relatively quiet down here right now. And the Lakers start off by putting together a couple of field goals on their two trips. Well, first of all, you see why I'm not coaching anymore. Because <laughs> Rambus has come in and got two straight field goals. Rambus heard you. He thought maybe he'd better do something here yeah. in the first few minutes, or AC Green will be right in. Aguirre off the fake is short. Magic rebounding defensively. Here's Scott off the pass, and here come the champions. Yeah, Aguirre and Rambus are really going at it. Perkins has not been involved in the Maverick offense as Aguirre turns and hits the field goal muscly. Couple things on plays like that. Must have more pressure on the basketball to make it tougher to make that entry pass. And also, Rambus has got to get around on him. Scott coming down, and the Lakers are perfect here on every trip in the second half. And for the time being, the crowd is out of this one, not helping the younger Mavericks. And there was an illegal defense being called by Jake O'Donnell. On the second one, of course, they would shoot the technical foul. Excellent call by Jake O'Donnell. That was a case where Rampus was fighting, fronting Aguirre. Worthy anticipating the pass came across that imaginary line. That's a couple of times today you've said, nice call. You're being very kind to your buddies, the officials. Well, you know, it's... It's one of those days. I'll the day before you go into the Hall of Fame, yeah. you know? <laughs> Donaldson. Sam Perkins on the pass over. Hit the shot from the perimeter. And for Perkins, that's 16. Great patience offensively, finding the open man. Scott. He now has 18 points, Billy. You know, Brent, he went through a rough stretch in the middle of the year, and Pat Riley benched him for 12, 13 games, but he responded. Oh, ah! Dyer, Donaldson almost lost it. And it goes back to the Mavericks. Lakers touched it last. Scott arguing. We've got a timeout here in Reunion. Pat Riley will bring Magic Johnson to the Lakers over, and we'll be right back. And he is still playing at the very height of his game. Do you remember some of the players who came in either the same year that Kareem did or afterwards who are gone? How about Pete Maravich? He retired in 1980. Jojo White, Bob Dandridge, George McGinnis, Dave Cowens. The list continues. Calvin Murphy, Spencer Haywood, Bob Lanier, Nate Archibald, and Jamal Wilkes. And Kareem has outlasted all of them, Billy. He's phenomenal. You know what? He constantly is improving. This year is the first time since 1981-82 that he was in the top ten in scoring. It just shows he's put a player. Blackman missing. Here come the Lakers now. They trail only by five points. Oh. Magic had it knocked free. Has 
as he drove inside, and it goes off of him and over to the Mavericks. Harper off the spin move. Scott rebounding. What they did that last time was isolate Magic. He comes on through the middle, and it's a three-point Dallas lead. You know what's interesting is Kareem now is getting out and running and out of transition. Now, I think he realizes that he's got to give everything for them to win today. Scott working on Blackman, but there was an elbow down underneath. And that's Rambus's first foul. He and Aguirre have been going at it hard. Yeah, here's Rambus and, and Aguirre. Rambus trying to beat him across the lane. You know, if you're an offensive forward, you love to play for Dick Mata. The size of that hand when Mark Aguirre came through. He simply controlled and overpowered Rambus. Yeah, Brent, but I, I know that. But the thing is, he got no, no one reacted defensively to give him any help in that situation. Green spins back the other way. Blackman trying to get into a shooting rhythm in this series. That's 13 points in this game. Perkins leaning on his buddy Wood. And James turns it over because he traveled. That's eight turnovers by the Lakers. Mavericks leading by five, 7.40 to go, third period. Sloppy pass, Mavericks got lucky. But the intensity defensively is picking up for the Lakers. Aguirre. And Pat Riley immediately will bring Cooper into the game. And Michael Cooper will be playing Mark Aguirre. The Michael Cooper, Larry Bird feels, is the best defensive player he plays against. Green made a turn in between Donaldson and Aguirre, and Aguirre made the contact. That's his first personal and the first team foul against the Mavericks in the third group. Cooper is in, and Rambus is out. Well, here's Green, 16 points, and only one rebound so far in this game. Earlier in the first half, Maurice Lucas being the leading rebounder on this team, Brent, that's the first time I can ever remember someone coming off the bench and leading their team and rebounding. That's why I wasn't sure if I liked that stat if I was the Lakers. I'd like to have one of my starters leading with me, leading the team rebounding. Donaldson was fouled out. Well, James Worthy's got the matchup with Aguirre. And for Mark Aguirre, that's 33. That was perfect defense for Aguirre. As we said, the third periods so far in this playoff has, have been his period. That's been his period. Got to go back 16 games to find a 30-point score for the Mavericks. And that was Donaldson. Johnson wrapped up out of bounds, and it was over to the Mavericks. Magic out of bounds. And we've got a timeout in Dallas. The NBA champions are under fire. Today, Atlanta beat Boston 106-94. There'll be no sweep in that series. We see L.A. going to their trap. Looking to force some turnovers. Take, take this Dallas team out of this rhythm they're in right now offensively. Magic spinning around the wire. Five on three. Gets it off to Scott. Donaldson with a hand on it. And goes the other way.
They're looking to go to the trap again. Just trying to take them out of their set, maybe get a turnover, get this Dallas team to start thinking offensively. They're in such a good rhythm. Lockman. Seventy-four Mavericks, 540, third period. The Lakers leading the series two games to one. Magic. Now we see the matchups are very interesting. Now Magic is playing Perkins. Turned inside worthy. They are just playing phenomenal offensive basketball, this Dallas team. Dick Mata has them so well prepared for any type of defense they're going to see against the Lakers. Just a good, strong move. Aguirre, when he gets the ball down there, he is just, he's almost impossible for one man to stop. Straight time, third time now in this period, the Lakers have had that problem stepping out of bounds. You see Cooper urging Byron Scott to come back defensively. They want to look to put more defensive pressure in the backcourt. Blackman. That's scary. Now he's got it going. I don't know who you you feel your defense towards Frank. Perkins hasn't really touched the ball and he's shooting the lights out. You got Harper. Everyone on this ball club is shooting the ball so well. Johnson for the Lakers. 19 for the afternoon. I guess the question is, are they going to be able to maintain this shooting pace for another 16 and a half minutes? Three-pointer by Hartley. You know, you talk about a helpless feeling. Pat Riley's got that right now. Because anything he does now defensively, he's got them working their tails off defensively, but nothing is working. Magic for the Lakers. 21. That's assistant coach Bob Weiss up in the background along with head coach Dick Mata. Now they're going to that three-man game, taking two players, Harper, outside. Lockman. That's 19 for Rolando. And Michael Cooper got his foot caught up in a, one of our handheld cables there underneath the basket. Timeout has been called. just going to carry them and not allow them to lose this lead. This ball is going right into Kareem. And I'll tell you one of the enormous difficulties of that crowd, and that is Pat Riley's inability to communicate offensively as Cooper misses a three-pointer. But Matthew Johnson cleans up underneath and draws the foul, and he'll come to the free-throw line. Well, Brent, yesterday when we were talking with Pat, I asked him if he would change his choice of where he was uh, coming out which basket he wanted to start the game with and end up next to his bench and I mentioned to him because he had to go yesterday worked on hand signals because the crowd was so loud that they could not communicate on the court and I was wondering if he tried to keep the offense near his bench for the second half most coaches prefer to have the defense operate in front of them in the second half on the road because they can yell out defensive sets and shifts and whatever he wants to do. Riley standing right up there behind the ball. Off the glass, over to the Lakers. Here comes Magic. Rejected by Blackman and off into the hands of Parker. Great defense. They got back so well as a team, Brent. They had four people back defensively after a turnover. The 
Harkin. Watson again underneath, ships it back out to Harper. Great choice. He realized where he was. Excellent court sense. Benson. As Marker McGuire gets a rest here in the third period. He was taken out because of some back problems earlier. And Benson off the plate. Kareem loses it. Dallas ball. You know, the reason Kareem lost that ball was the great hustle, the intensity this Kareem Dallas is team is playing at. They just were attacking the boards and, and forced him to be off balance and was never able to gain control of the basketball. Reese Lucas returning for Riley. Harper gets it back. Three-pointer. He was six feet beyond the three-point line and hit that shot. He has hit three three-pointers here this afternoon. Lucas, sure. Worthy has it wind up in his hand. Inside of two minutes, third period, 95-81, Dallas over the Lakers. Worthy. Short, and then it got the bounce, and it's 16 for Worthy. Houston leading Denver by one point in the third period. You notice Pat Riley sat Magic down for a little breather. I think he sat him down as much as anything. Magic is such a great competitor. You had the feeling he was trying to win this game by himself, and he can't do that. They have to win it together at the offensive end. Vincent, offensive foul, just go over to the Lakers. Now, Michael Cooper's got to get his offense going. In that first half, he was 0 for 5 from the field. Well, here comes the crowd favorite, Bill Winnington. Vincent sits down. There were three rookies drafted on the first round by Dallas. Shrimp, Winnington, and Uwe Blob. And I think Modest higher on Winnington is Kareem. Swings free of Donaldson. Winnington being used at a forward spot. Maurice Lucas got hit right on the shoulder. You know he's really hurt because he would have had a chance to get down there and get an easy basket, but he just cannot move. I didn't see what happened. Did you, Brent? I did not see it. It's the left shoulder. Maurice is a tough guy, and he... He's been around in this league for many years, and I'm sure he's, when I, you could see his face, he was grimacing out there when he got banged. Let's see if we can pick it out here, Billy. He is somewhat near the middle, yep. trying and, to get into rebound. Yeah, looking to get to the offensive boards. He was coming past Winnington, and Winnington's right arm and shoulder made contact with him. You know, that was tough to see. Certainly did not look like a hard blow, but it caught him just right, and he sits down because of the stiffness. And A.C. Green is back in there. Winnington tracking him right now at the defensive end for Dallas. Abdul Jabbar. When he still has that height, Billy, off that sky hook, it means he is not tired. That's right. Pat was saying that when he really swings and has that good rhythm on his jumps, on his hook shot, he's in great shape. You know, it's interesting watching the difference of the coaching philosophy defensively. You see the Lakers with great pressure on the basketball, whereas the Dallas team, they're dropping off the perimeter shooters, trying to give that help inside and try to force the perimeter shot. Lucas returns, so the injury was not serious. And Abdul Jabbar takes a break for the Lakers. Now, right now, Brent, with 10 seconds left, Dallas has played a phenomenal third period shooting wise, and they've lost two points in their lead. Winnington's three pointer. Take that back. <laughs> That's why Dick Mata likes it. Cooper bangs one in, but no basket. The buzzer had sounded.
Let's take a look at this. Good call by Jake O'Donnell. Excellent, especially with as loud as this crowd was at that time to hear that sound. 12 minutes left for the NBA champions, and they trail Dallas 98-87. This is CBS. All JB TV4. When it comes to teamwork, fans and players have something in common. If somebody on your team is having an off night. And the Dallas Mavericks have hit five of five from beyond that three-point line here this afternoon. The Lakers, on the other hand, are 0 of 6. And of course, it was a three-pointer by Derek Harper at the buzzer on Friday night that allowed the Mavericks to win in this series for the first time. I want to correct what I said on game six, Billy. I said it was live. That will be delayed a short time if there is a sixth game. That would not be live, but it would be game six Thursday night if the Mavericks hold on and win here now. Perkins. Bringing it back out to Harper, 98-87, we start the stretch. Well, we saw the Lakers came out with their trap. Magic looking down the floor to attack. Their first three-pointer, and Michael Cooper, his first points of the game. I, when he first came into this league, he was two for 17 with three-pointers. This year, he had 63. You see the trap, they're trying to take them out of their set offense, look to create a turnover. And it's Perkins scoring the field goal, taking the blow, and he'll come on out and shoot the free throw. That's what penetration does to you, Brent. Maurice Lucas was in a position, should he come help on Brad Davis? Brad Davis forced him to make a decision and was able to hit Perkins for the possible three-point play. 18 points and five rebounds to go along with that for Sam Perkins. Game one of this series, well, the Mavericks were overwhelmed in the form, gave up 130 points, but they've been getting better and better as this series progresses. And if anything, this has to give Houston or Denver hope against the Lakers as Lucas bangs one in from the corner. The champions have come to Dallas, and so far they have looked quite vulnerable in two games. Quite vulnerable, but they're playing against a team that's playing the best basketball in the, in the history of the franchise in the last two ball games. Open man, five on the shot. Resetting the shot. They'll reset it to ten because it was knocked out of bounds. Riley barking defensive instructions. They have five seconds to get this shot off. Davis under pressure swings free. It would not have counted even if it had gone on. The shot clock had expired. It'll be interesting to see now if they're able to continue with this defensive pressure that they've been able to, except for the one penetration play by Brad Davis and, and dishing off to Perkins, the Lakers with a small lineup have come out and really done an excellent job pressuring and really working defensively. Worthy. Lucas runs down that loose ball. A.C. Green is over in the corner, and Mavericks touched it as it went out of bounds. Excellent communication between the two officials. Jake O'Donnell on the baseline was blocked out. He looked to Lee Jones, who helped him out on the foul. Magic coming through. Can't get the roll. Mark McGuire, who had returned, was there. And Donaldson and Worthy exchanging words. This ball now, James Worthy, is for And afterwards, where they says something to Donaldson and things are all right there. Is Worthy looking to reach in and grab the ball? Donaldson did not like someone coming over his back to, to try and knock that ball loose. Got a timeout in Dallas. The Mavericks leading 101 to 92. Can be sponsored by the U.S. Army.
Philadelphia's Maurice Cheeks has proven to be a diamond in the rough. An unheralded second-round draft pick in 1978, Cheeks is now the steady floor general of the 76ers. One of the top point guards in the league, Cheeks excels at hitting the open man. He also has developed a deadly outside jumper to complement his slashing drives to the hoop. An ideal team player, Maurice Cheeks keeps striving to be the best he can be. 78 to 74. Game four at McNichols Arena. Wayne Cooper, starting center for Denver, on the bench with five fouls. And that has been the story of this game so far, Doug. Well, Houston has been able to avoid their big men getting their fifth. Elijah one on the bench with four. Samson has four. Shays and Cooper both with five. We have not seen Rasmussen since the first period, so they do have another big man to put in the ball game. Samson with 15 in the quarter. And McCray takes it all the way in for the slam. So 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. That's the story here in Denver. The number one fan for the Los Angeles Lakers, Jack Nicholson, somewhat concerned about what's unfolding here. Meanwhile, the number one fan for the Dallas Mavericks, their owner, Donald Carter, he's delighted with what's happening right here. And the halftime entertainment was provided by the Grambling Band, and they're helping to keep this crowd whipped up. They don't need much encouragement here in Dallas. We Not at all. Here this afternoon. Harper. And the beat continues. 103-92 now. They're just moving the ball so crisply. Reacting so well defensively and offensively. He's just playing a great ball game. The Skyhawk. And arrested Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Had the rhythm and the extension on the right arm that time. 24 points for Kareem. Pressure. AC Green with a hand on the ball. Well, you see now the Lakers are looking to pick up full court pressure wise. Now the problem is Magic doesn't have the ability to really go out and pressure Brad Davis the way Cooper could. Kareem stole it from Perkins. And here's Magic coming back. Swinging inside. Perkins with a hand on it. And there is a foul. That's the third personal on Perkins, reaching in on Magic Johnson. Two team fouls on the Lakers and only one on the Mavericks, with rookie Detlef Schrempf from the University of Washington returning here for Dallas. Now, this is a tough spot for Schrempf to be in the ballgame. Being a rookie, he struggled in game three. Boy, Magic is really struggling on the foul line. He's just lost all confidence in this foul shot. Overall, 23 points for Magic in this game. We go under nine. Wire pops out. Double team. Magic has to retreat, and Brad Davis misses the shot. Lucas is off to Cooper. Green stays back. Now he's coming down. Illegal defense. You know, that was a smart play by Mark Aguirre, though. He was coming over. He thought they were, that Cooper was going to lob the ball over Brad Davis's head to Magic Johnson. And he came from the weak side. And Cooper faked. And he came across. And he looked to double the basketball. But Jake O'Donnell was a step ahead of him and realized what he was doing. Blackman returning to the game. He picked up Magic right away. There's the duel. Magic pops off of him, gets it to Kareem. And Cooper winds up with the loose ball. Lucas. Missing. Donaldson off with another rebound. That's 10 rebounds by James Donaldson. He is the unheralded member of the starting cast for Dick Mata's team. Houston leading Denver. Already up in that series 2-1. Here we see the three-man game. Reaching in by Lucas on Shrimp. It's not a bad foul on Brent because it's good and aggressive and you want to see that and they have to have more pressure on the passer. There goes the new choir. Now Magic's got to make the decision. Does he help? Didn't matter. Mark Aguirre with 37 points here this afternoon. 21 of them in the first period. Now you can see defensively how they're playing. Blackman looking to back off Magic, looking to give the help. Blackman on the steal, leads Shrimp. Cooper with a hand on it, and Shrimp reaches in and fouls him. That's his third personal. That's 
only two team fouls, so there'll be no shooting in the sequence. Brent, it's gonna, it, what it's going to amount to is that at some point, Cooper and Magic are going to have to hit the perimeter shot offensively because they're going to back off. They're going to get the help inside against Lucas and against Jabbar. Magic hitting off the drive. Now that's some challenge for a rookie, A.C. Green, to be playing a player that's so hot and playing so well as Mark Aguirre. Here they are, they're gonna go inside again, looking to go to Aguirre. Lucas helps out. They swing to Shrimp. They hit Blockman as the open man. That's just beautiful, Brent. The ball starts on the other side of the court, the double team. They make those two, three passes and find the open man for the easy shot. Lakers ball. That might have been a break for the Lakers. It appeared from here that that went off Jabbar's, Jabbar's hand. See them even backing off Maurice Lucas, Aguirre, everybody. They're almost in an outright zone, which is a, a, a nasty word to say in the NBA, but that's the way they're playing defensively. They're just saying, hey, Lakers, if you're going to get back into this game, you're going to have to hit it over the top, and we're going to try and stop your transition game. Green now at 26. Blockman coming off. The... He's up to 23, and this is the best shooting he has done in this series so far. Back down to Abu Jabbar, which the Lakers generally do when they get into trouble. Now watch how physical this is getting underneath. A.C. Green, Donaldson is just banging everything and anything that moves. Oh, we've got a timeout. We'll be right back. But they have. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar getting the roll on that. So he has 27 points. He is on the floor with Maurice Lucas, Magic Johnson, James Worthy, and Michael Cooper. For the Mavericks, and just as Worthy appears, Sam Perkins is there with Brad Davis, James Donaldson, Orlando Blackman, and Mark Aguirre. Aguirre with 37 points. His playoff high is 39. It's an eight-point lead. They're going to look to swing it, look for Aguirre popping out on the weak side. Worthy's doing a good job fighting through. blocks it. Hit by Perkins. It'll go to the Lakers. Now you certainly cannot blame the Lakers offense. They've hit 55% here today. But Dallas has blazed away at 62%. From the corner they get the bounce. And Worthy field goal has pulled the Lakers to within six. Blackman Cooper fell down trying to get around to him. Uh, he got a knee right in the thigh. But the thing is, they're executing and getting those good shots, Dallas. Kareem yeah. leaning him in. Sent him up to the free throw line. And Donaldson's fourth foul. You know, Brent, he's in it all to me, you know, with five minutes left in this game. Well, Riley gave him two good breaks in this game. Billy, and that may have kept him revived. Something else about Abu Jabbar, he paces himself as well as any pro basketball player I've ever been around. Yeah, but there's one other factor. What's inside of the man? He's such a great competitor. He knows that he has to just take a deep breath and go out there and extend himself, even if he is a little tired. Blackman, magic fouled him, score the field goal and bring Blackman to the line. He is lighting it up today, Brent. Second half, Blackman is eight of nine. 
And the Lakers right now have to really dig in defensively, and they have to show a lot of character and a lot of poise out there. Make sure they're playing under control, playing as a team, because they won't get back in this ball game any other way. Blockman, he tapped it, and Magic was on the other side, and Blockman hit him with the loose ball foul. The lineup that, uh, you know, Pat knows his team and knows what their abilities are in these type of situations, and I'm sure that's what he's going by. Magic, 26 points. Ian Kareem have carried the team offensively in the second half. Overall, Abdul Jabbar 31, Johnson now 27. Now, one thing Dick Mata has the tendency to do when someone's really going well, he'll go to that man. And that man right now has the ball and he's passing it to the other guy. Magic came over to help out. And Great he hustle. Forced the turnover. You see them getting back so well. We've said it so many times today, Brent. The way they've gotten back and made that commitment to really bust their tails getting back defensively. Scott. Now, Kareem, that's what he was looking for. He held it that long. He knew the man he was trying to get into, the best perimeter shooter, Scott. And he had that patience and poise to find the right man. It's a new ball game. Blackman under fire that time. Johnson with a big rebound. And oh. coming back was Derek Harper. No basket, the whistle had sounded. It'll go over. What hustle by Derek Harper. But that's a four-point play. He's going to, now they'll go to the foul line at the other end of the court. I will see this great hustle. There's Derek Harper just busting his tail back defensively. Knocking that ball free and right into Sam Perkins' hands. It was two years ago to the day when Derek Harper dribbled out to the clock. Up by a point, and with a score tied, he dribbled away, and the Lakers won it in overtime. Friday night, he beat Los Angeles with a three-pointer with time running out. And just moments ago, he made the biggest defensive play of this game. Four point play with Blackman at the defensive end of the court. At the offensive end of the court, you know, they have to look to push it. They normally like to go into Kareem Abdul Jabbar when it becomes crunch time. There it is. The other point is Dick Mott is, I'm sure, was reminding his players hey, let's keep doing what we've done to this point. When we get a running opportunity, let's push it. And when we have to execute offensively, let's make sure we do the job. Blackman has scored nine of the last 11. Now, this is the set they ran to beat L.A. in the last ball game. Missing that shot. <laughs> Were they wrapping up the rebound? Bodies are just flying all over the place. This is the perfect time for Maurice Lucas to be on the court. Now we'll see if they're going to double down how they'll react defensively. <laughs> Lucas is it back to Worthy. Short. And it bounces in. The reason for that tip in by Magic, Maurice Lucas just pounding it, got his hand on the basketball and kept it loose. Now we'll see how far this Dallas Maverick ball club has come and how mature and how much poise they have. Harper gets it into Aguirre, takes it back. Mm -hmm. 